You see these holes? They're actually tunnels to cut through the forest, and they were created by tigers and leopards. Just 10 minutes walk from where my dad lives. You're gonna see my dad lives around a bunch of apex predators. Which is admittedly pretty scary. But growing up, I was always comforted by the fact that they don't tend to attack humans. By the end of this video, you'll see just how wrong I was. Dead wrong. So my dad lives in a place called Uti, which is a picturesque, isolated, cold mountain town. It towers over the south of India. If you watch a Bollywood movie and they're singing and they're dancing all happy on a mountain, odds are that's Uti. Uti is literally surrounded by jungles in every direction. But my goal today isn't a geography lesson. It's more biology. Yes, this will be a journey around some of the jungles, the nature and animals we see, what we feel. But I wanna show you how for centuries people have lived with invisible borders drawn between man and nature. Borders animals don't even know exist. In this series, I want to explore the impact of India's explosive growth of both animal and human populations. I want to understand if a delicate balance between man and animal can ever really be achieved. Or are we on an irreversible path towards more conflict and more bloodshed. All right, I'm excited to get into this. It's a lot, so let's start the story. Let's head down the mountain towards Masnagudi, a jungle area. But we'll make a stop along the way for a very special view. We pay special attention to the rocks on top of the hills, as that's where tigers tend to spend time. But they could be anywhere in this dense terrain. Tigers are insanely shy creatures, so it is extremely rare you get to see them. In the wild, they say you're more likely to see God in your lifetime than you are to see a tiger. Somehow, my dad has seen seven tigers. I've seen leopards in the wild before, but never a tiger. And that's my goal for this trip. There are a number of tiger reserves, meaning land protected as tiger habitat, within an hour's drive from where my dad lives. Passing through them, there are usually some main roads the public is allowed to drive. Animals rarely come to the side of these roads, but it does happen. There are also villagers and tribal folk that have lived in the buffer areas around the tiger reserves for hundreds of years. And they have been living peacefully, sharing land with these big cats for generations. After an hour or so of driving the Tiger Reserve with no luck, we decided to check out some land my dad is developing as a farm for beans. I noticed the gate is already open when we arrive and there's damage to the property. Came inside here the dust, elephant. Elephant tusk went through there. How do you know it's elephant tusk? Borders can reach that height. Elephants come through here on a daily basis looking for food. If I close the gate, they'll break the gate. This gate. Elephants will smash the gate if they feel like passing through and the gate is shut. Remember, in the jungle, animals are the landlords. We're just freeloading in their space. India doesn't just have a rapidly growing human population, their elephant population continues to grow extremely quickly. It's about 30,000 elephants and growing, and upwards of 80% of them live outside protected elephant habitats. Outside of their habitats, food is much harder to come by, and elephants often end up on agricultural land, taking crops from poor defenseless farmers, a phenomenon known as crop raiding. At up to 10 feet tall, six tons. They could easily crush a car, let alone a farmer. Their trunks weigh 400 pounds and have 40,000 muscles in them. They could use these trunks to easily lift up to 800 pounds. Their bite force is three times stronger than a lion, and they are ornery. They can have real bad tempers, especially if they feel provoked, their family is at risk, they have hormone imbalances, or they have been cast out by their family, 
a phenomenon where the elephant is referred to as rogue. Rogue elephants are extremely dangerous. And when they lose their tempers, they go full kill bill. They have no shortage of ways to attack humans. They trample you under their feet, pick you up with their trunks and smash you against the ground, crush you with their head and impale you. They could do any or all those things at the same time. They are magnificent creatures, but you do not want to get on the bad side of an elephant. Here's a local farmer we met sharing a story with us about his recent encounter with a real aggressive elephant. Suddenly, elephant escaped. They crashing the mic. So what can I do? I cannot to run more for the elephant. So I jumped the bush place. So he dove into some thorny bushes, got all scratched up and hid. So I fell down in the bush inside and I, I sleep like this. So he won't come searching everywhere. At times, the trunk was only one foot away from his head. Take the, this one, no. Shh, like this. So about one hour I stay from that place. If you find out uh, the elephant, so I am finished that day. <laughs> Nothing. And so then, nobody know him, no. I wear he gone. Over 500 people a year die from elephant attacks in India. A disturbingly increasing trend. Countless amounts of crops are destroyed, and even more disturbingly, at least a hundred elephants are killed each year in retaliatory or revenge killings. Farmers who have lost their livelihoods take to poisoning, electrocuting, and even setting elephants on fire. We head to the back of the farm and we spot some elephant dung that is fairly fresh, another sign that they frequent this area. Then my dad shares with me an example of what happens when animals don't have enough of the food they like to eat in their natural habitat. So the leopards come out earlier and scout. They see what dogs, what other animals can I feast on, but then they come back at night. His neighbor had a beloved pet dog killed and eaten by a leopard not that long ago. A leopard came here. Picked up a dog from that it house, has, yes. a leopard. Brought it here. Ate it, ate just one leg and left the rest of it here to come back in the night or something probably. Just drank the blood. Leaving some of the body to be eaten later. The dog's body was found after the first feed. They wanted to dig the ground there so I gave them paid and everything. So they buried the dog here. Next, we took a break at a local bar for a somewhat racist beer before meeting an old buddy of my dad who drove us around the public jungle roads to some spots where he had seen some big cats. Water, water, yeah. yeah. Oh, the tigers go in the water. We drive around and see a number of animals, but no tigers and no leopards. We're hoping to arrange for a more suitable vehicle and go into those core areas in the next couple of days. When the sun goes down, apex predators, including bears and tigers, tend to come out. So we need to head home for our own safety. Driving through the jungle at night is ominous because you know beyond where the light shines and to either side of you, certain death could be waiting. On our drive back, we pass what looks like a ghost appearing out of nowhere in the jungle night, but it's more likely a drunk villager. He looked like a ghost and might soon be one. It's not only illegal to be there when the sun goes down, it's damn near suicidal. Just around the corner, we spotted a herd of elephants that would likely kill this man in an instant. The next morning, we get word of a tiger sighting in Upper Bhavani, a dam in a restricted forest area near the Bhavani River. We managed to secure some access to this highly restricted area and head down to see if we could spot this majestic big cat. Bhavani is truly gorgeous, a lush place full of life. And we spot some black langur monkeys and the likely reason a tiger would be here, one of their main food sources, Samber. These deer are mighty and powerful, but when it comes to a sneak attack by a tiger, they stand no chance. After a tigerless morning, we decided to break for a lunch picnic at a beautiful spot with some food my dad's friends brought. Hyderabad lamb 
curry. And I soon learned they like the curry extra, extra, extra spicy in Hyderabad. As I ate overlooking a gorgeous lake, tears came to my eyes. At first, I couldn't tell if it was from the, the gorgeous views or the fire in my mouth. But I soon realized it was definitely it was definitely the curry. Towards the end of our meal, some monkey friends decided to join us. Just a warning, fellas. Unless your monkey's from Hyderabad, you better stay the hell away from this curry. Having missed the tiger in Upper Bhavani and waiting for access to some of the more restricted zones in the coming days, my dad and I decided to try our luck with one of the Tiger Reserve's safari buses. Boasting questionable suspension, loud tourists, even louder engines, we were way more likely to scare away any animals than see them, but we were here anyways, we might as well give it a shot. As we took the bumpy roads through the forest, where these noisy buses come through every hour, we did see some animals, but it became even clearer to me. If I was going to see a tiger on this trip, we had to get special access and avoid these noisy tourist traps. Night falls, and we take the dark roads back up the mountain. We spot something on the way I haven't seen in the wild in all my trips before. A wild black bear. It was a brief encounter before it went back into the mysterious forest, but was still a treat to see. And another reminder that under the blanket of darkness, jungles hold countless dangers. The next day, we went for a morning drive to a popular lake where we could see the impact of an unusually hot summer on the local ecosystem. You can see just behind us in between how much the water has receded here. So the lake used to be much higher than this. It's actually declining. So if there's less rain, there's less greenery. If there's less greenery, there's less stuff for the deer. Less deer means less food for tigers. Less food for tigers mean we become food. Yeah. Finally, some luck had come through and we were able to get a gypsy a smaller vehicle to take us to an area where a tiger is known to frequent. There's a sense of adventure and hints of terror every time you go off the main roads and head into the core jungle area. And it always brings a smile to my face. Instantly, you notice the difference between these areas and where the safari buses go. The abundance of animals, the undisturbed greenery, the peace. Your eyes work overtime taking in the breathtaking beauty, while also trying to spot animals that have spent thousands of years evolving specifically to not be seen. It's a race against time given there's only a short window between 5 and 6 p.m. The sweet spot where animal activity is higher, visibility is strong, and it's relatively safer for you to be in the forests. You're not allowed to be in there after dark, nor would you want to be. About 45 minutes into our ride, with no luck seeing tigers, we stumbled upon something perhaps equally as rare. We spotted a herd of elephants in the distance, but not just any herd, a huge family. We're talking about dozens of elephants, and in taking in the beauty of their family dynamic and keeping a healthy, safe distance, we slowly began to realize that we were now surrounded. A couple of the elephants are observing us. They're also blocking our only exit. And we are 30 minutes away from sunset. We sit there for some time as all of us contemplate our next steps and the best approach. There's nothing like Mother Nature to help us realize how helpless all of us truly are. The driver, he does not honk because that could stun or aggravate them. He doesn't try and just drive right through because they could intercept us and knock our Jeep over like it was a child's toy. Instead, he turns our Jeep into an animal. He uses the engine to slowly grumble and roar, letting the animals know that we're coming through. As the engine's roar gets louder and louder, he starts to charge through, knowing that any hesitation or stopping, and we are done. Two of the largest elephants start aggressively letting out trumpeting roars, charging towards the back seat where I'm sitting. But we made it through, just barely. They decided to stop chasing and let us go. Shaken up, me and my dad hung around for a few minutes, 
we reflected on our elephant experience. The jungle roads are always ominous at night, but felt extra ominous tonight. I'm not sure if it was our elephant experience or a sign of what was to come, but the next morning, we got some news that I never expected to hear. The next day, we got some news that a tiger was indeed where we were the day before, where we had our whole elephant experience and we were recapping it outside, just five minutes away. There was a tiger during broad daylight, a villager, an innocent tribal woman whose forefathers had lived there for generations, went out to collect firewood, as she always does, and didn't come home. She was killed and she was eaten by a tiger. In the next video, we are diving deep into the aftermath of this murder. Jungle access has been cut off now, and my obsession shifts from trying to see a tiger in the wild to understanding why and how this murder happened. I study the case, I talk to experts, I read a bunch of books and reports, and what I uncover goes way beyond a single murder. And it reveals how through good intentions, we may have created a ticking tiger time bomb. I know this video was quite different from my last one. If you did like it, hit like, leave me a comment, let me know that you like this different kind of video that I've tried to do. And if you don't want to miss the second part to this video or any of my future videos, guaranteed to be spicier than that Hyderabad curry, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace! Bonus, not easy for you to see, but check out the cute tiger on my t-shirt.